fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Hooray! is a boy of fire. He brings wild animals back alive. He can capture lions cause he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, all right. The nourishing oat cereal that's shaped like little letter O's. The ready-to-eat cereal with a wonderful toasted oat flavor. What's more, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. That's right. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. And these good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So try Cheerios, the famous oat cereal that needs no cooking. And soon you'll hear people say... Mm-hmm. He's feeling his Cheerios. Miles Janis, the richest ranch owner in the town of Richland, died and left his fortune to his son David, a confirmed gambler and ne'er do well. During the next two years, Dave Janis gambled away his cash reserves and was forced to sell his entire stock of cattle to buyers in Kansas City. His ranch foreman, Ali Moonen, a former cattle rustler, was with Dave when a young wastrel paid off his trail gang. Then, taking the rest of the sale money, Dave headed for a Kansas City gambling house. Late the next afternoon, after a night of gaming... Dave Janis lost his last chip. Yeah, that's it, men. Full house wins, kings over jacks. Uh, me. Yeah. Better luck next time, fella. Uh, Janis turned to Ali Moonen, who had remained with him. Clean me, Ali. Broke. I am too, boss. I lent you all I had. Uh, lucky in one way. Your tickets back to Richmond. But you have no livestock back there. No cow hands to run the place if you did have stock. Something tells me I'll have you back in the brand-changing business again. Hey, my friend Jip Lowry's in Richland. He could help us. That's good to know. Let's figure other ways to make money first. I need a badly. Soon. He'll think up something on the way back to Richland. <laughs> Dave Janis and Ollie Moonen went to the railroad station that evening. As they walked to their car, they passed the baggage coach. This money goes to Richmond? Yes. Three men, holding guns in their hands, stood around a collection of canvas suitcases, each of which had lettering on the side. Ollie pointed to one of the bags. Boss, look what it says on the side of that one bag. Bank of Richmond, it says. Yeah, see it. Tomorrow, the first of the month? No, next day. Why? Uh, Richland Bank receives a money shipment from Kansas City in the first of each month. That must be it. Bank money, huh? Uh, You wouldn't have to rustle cattle if you had that cash. No, I wouldn't. Two men sat alone in the train on their way to Richland. After a long silence, Dave said, Holly, I remember something. This train doesn't get into Richland until six tomorrow evening. Bank doesn't pick up the money then. No? 
Who does? No one. Left in the station master's office in the safe. Hmm? Bank people pick it up in the morning. Ali, I have an idea. I'm getting some myself. What's yours, boss? Hmm. Josh Allen, the station master, is an old friend of my father's. When we get to Richmond tomorrow evening, I'll go to his office. Dave talked about his plan during the rest of the trip. At 6 o'clock, the train reached Richland. Ali Moonen left the train and headed for the town's main street, while Dave Janis waited inside the railroad car and alighted when he saw two guards emerge from the station master's office and return to the baggage coach. Then he, too, hurried to the station master's office. Josh, will you? Uh, Josh, are you in? Who's there? Oh, oh, it's you, Mr. Janis. I'm over here by the safe. Uh, Josh, I uh, have an envelope here with important papers inside. Just take them to the bank in the morning. Do you mind keeping them for me until then? I'd uh, be glad to keep them. I was just going to put this suitcase into the safe. Let me have the papers, huh? Here you are, Josh. Josh Allen knelt in front of the safe and began to work the dial. Intent on the task, he was unaware that Dave Janis had tiptoed behind him and was watching closely, writing a combination on a piece of paper cupped in his hand. There she is. Uh, thanks, Josh. Uh, I'll see you in the morning. Janice Ranch was on the outskirts, less than two miles from the town's main street. Ali Moonen had his pal Jip Lowry with him when he arrived at the Dave Janice Ranch house shortly after sundown that evening. The man exchanged greetings, and then Dave outlined the plan he had discussed with Ali on the train. Jip asked, What's this alibi you're setting up? A fire. Fire? Yeah. I'm going to make certain my barn catches fire about 10 o'clock tonight. Your barn? Where's that? Uh, it's about 50 yards away from here, behind the house. I'll make a slow-burning fuse that'll burn for about half an hour. I'll lead it into the hayloft and light it about 9.30. And I'll ride into town and go to a cafe where people will see me. The fire will start about 10 o'clock, huh? Yeah. Because my place is so near town and on a hill, flames will be seen easily. Mm -hmm. That means a volunteer fire brigade of every man in Richmond. When the fire starts... You two be waiting someplace where you can't be seen. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, heading westward, had circled around the town of Richland and were riding along a back trail in the hill country near the outskirts. A bright moon shone, and as they neared the Janus Ranch, they saw two horsemen speeding from the property toward the trail. Hello. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Pull back into the underbrush here. Back up. Back, back. up. Back, fellas. The masked man and Indian backed their horses into the underbrush to a spot where they'd be unseen from the trail. But as the two horsemen approached and then passed, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were able to see them, and the brief view was enough for the masked man. When the horseman had passed, he asked, did you get a look at those men, Toto? The one near us was Ollie Moonen. Ah. Him one, he know. The other was Chip Lowry. Mm, that's not good for men who own ranches here. Toto, let's camp near here somewhere. Think we'll do some investigating tomorrow. We'll learn if we can what Moonen and Lowry are doing here. Up in hills. Seem good place to camp, Kimasabi. Then we'll camp there. Come on, Come on, come A few minutes after 10 o'clock that evening, Sheriff Pete Tuttle was standing in front of his office with his deputy Maynard when a man rushed up to him. Oh, Sheriff! Sheriff, the Janice Ranch is on fire! What? Uh, hey, look! See the sky over there to the west? Why, it's all red. I see flames. See them, Sheriff? Hey, sure I do. Boys, start shooting your guns off. Let's empty the cafes and get every man in town out there. That looks like a big fire. You ought to see it. Flames shooting way Get up. the alarm, boys. <laughs> Lone Ranger and Tonto, from their camp in the hills, saw the flames light up the sky above the Janus Ranch. They set out at once for the ranch. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, fella. In town, the gunshots of Sheriff Pete Tuttle and his deputies had brought men streaming into the main street from the cafes. Among the first to appear was Dave Janus. The sheriff called, Janus, your place is on fire. No, no, it can't be. Boys, 
Do you see the sky from here? It's a big fire may have spread. We're going to put out that fire, and I want every man to volunteer. All right. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Pilot Pete can fly a jet. He's 12 years old and the fastest yet. He can loop the loop because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios. The cereal shaped like little letter O's. And those O's stand for oats. The good grain Cheerios is made from. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, those good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. You can see that Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So make sure you have a Cheerios breakfast every day. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. A few minutes later, as the sheriff, Dave Janis, and the men of the town rode toward the fire, only two persons remained on the street. One, standing in front of the Red Lantern Cafe, was a girl entertainer, Carmen Carmel. She saw station master Josh Allen standing in front of the station platform and waved. Josh! Hi there, Josh! Why aren't you going to wake up? Josh Allen heard the girl and called back. Can't do it! Got to stay here! Better get back inside now. The old man, paying no further attention to the girl, turned and walked back into the open door of his office. As he stepped inside, two men with their faces covered leaped from the side of the room. One of them brought his gun crashing down on Alan's head. Tie him up and gag him. I'll open the safe. I have the combination here. Jeff tied and bound Josh Allen while Ollie opened the safe and took the money-filled suitcase. They hurried from the station office to the place nearby where they'd left their horses. When they mounted, they failed to see the girl, Carmen Carmel, crossing the street toward the station. Get up, get up, get up, get up. As the two crooks rode away, their horses into the underbrush, the girl saw them. Then, alarmed, she ran to the station master's office. Josh! Josh, is something wrong? Josh! <laughs> Sheriff Tuttle, Dave Janice, and the men from the town rode up to the scene of the fire. The barn, which had burned quickly, was a mass of flaming embers. It's destroyed. My barn's destroyed. Too bad, Janice. You're lucky it wasn't your house, though. You're lucky that it was only... Look, coming from back of the house. Hey, it's an engine. And a masked man. Those are brazier outlaws. I bet they set this fire. Uh, Take him. Don't let him get away. When he saw the masked men and Indian, thought quickly. No doubt they were outlaws. He would accuse them of setting the fire and make doubly sure of removing any suspicion of himself. He led the mob, who, with guns drawn, ran to the Lone Ranger and Toto. Open your hands, masked man. You're covered. Hold on. Lower those guns. You're making a mistake. No, we're not. You two set fire to my barn, didn't you? Let me show them, boys. Let right. the sheriff. I'll handle this. Let me talk to you. Hello, Sheriff. I'm glad you're here. I don't know. We're getting into a spot. Sheriff, do you know these outlaws? These men are not outlaws. They're on the side of the law. Always have and always will be. That's yeah. not so. They set fire to my barn. No, we didn't. We saw the fire and came here to help fight it. Without help, there was nothing we could do except try to stop it spreading. Yeah. Lower your hands. You too, Tom. Uh. Well, thanks, Sheriff. If you look at the ground, you'll see we've tried to keep it wet so the fire wouldn't spread. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. That's uh, right, Sheriff. Look. It's all water between here and the house. Yeah. 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 Did you ever hear of Ollie Moonen and Jip Lowry, the Texas outlaws? As the Lone Ranger spoke the name Ollie Moonen, Dave Janice paled and decided to take a desperate chance. Before he could try, the Sheriff spoke. 
Ollie Moonen, an outlaw? But, but he's Mr. Janice's ranch foreman. That's right. He's not an outlaw. This man is lying. Moonen's been in jail for rustling. And the man who left here with him tonight was Jip Lowry, another convicted uh, rustler. Uh, they were here tonight? Sir, uh, don't believe this man. Moonen was here, yes, uh, about 7 o'clock. He went back to town alone. I left about 8. We see outlaw here. After that time. You're the outlaws. Sheriff, they broke into my house and threatened me. Janice, you can't mean that. I'm sure these men have never threatened any honest man. And we never saw you before tonight, Janice. Sheriff, the rat is coming this way. Uh -huh. Hey, it's a woman. Hey, 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 that's the girl from the cafe in town. Oh, oh there. Oh, Sheriff, there's been a holdup in town. The station master was gone. <laughs> Without waiting for questions, Carmen Carmel told of seeing the men right away and then of finding Josh Allen in the half-open safe. And I cut the ropes from old Josh and brought him to. He saw the safe right away. Bank money's been stolen, that's what he said. Thousands and thousands of dollars. Miss Carmel, you said you saw the two robbers riding away. Did you see their faces? Only one of them, Sheriff. A fellow I know from the cafe, Ollie Moonen. Ollie Moonen. Dave Janice, do you hear that? The sheriff and his men went back to their horses hurriedly and mounted them. We've been hornswoggled. Those hombres set fire to this place to get us out of town so they could rob the bank. I think you're right, Sheriff. I know I am. Men, are you all ready? Hey, Toto and I ride with you, Sheriff. Well, sure thing. Come on along. One, two, three. Get out there. Get out there. The Lone Ranger, Tonto, the sheriff, and the others sped from the ranch and headed for town. They had covered only a short distance when the Lone Ranger rode close to the lawman. Sheriff, will you stop these men for a minute? Right. Stop, everybody. Oh, 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 oh. What's on your mind, mister? Where's that man Janice, Sheriff? What? Well, isn't he with us? I thought... He, he was... remained behind, Sheriff. I know he did. I saw him pull back. Well, we'll talk to him later. But first, I'd like to play a hunch I have. May I have one of your deputies to stay with me here? The deputies? Uh, sure, sure, we have a lot of men. If you have an idea of some kind, go through with it. I know you well enough to have faith in your ideas. Thanks. I'll take two men, then. Sheriff Tuttle instructed Deputy Bill Maynard and another man, Luke Hall, to remain with the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Then the lawman, Carmen Carmel, and the other men continued on to town. Yeah. The masked man spoke to Maynard and Hall. I may be wrong in what I'm about to do. I am unsorry. If I'm right, I want you men as witnesses and to take charge officially. All right. What are you going to do? That fire was a decoy, no doubt about it. Why Mr. Janice should deliberately lie and say Toto and I entered his house and threatened him is something that's a mystery. Well, he took that back before we left, remember? Yes. After the girl identified his foreman, Ollie Moonen. Now, men, here's what I plan to do. We'll go back near the Janus Ranch and hide among the trees that grow along the main trail there. I'll write a note now. Tonto will take that note. Dave Janus paced the floor of his ranch house, unnerved by the developments of the past 20 minutes. He finished a drink when suddenly a rock crashed through the window and fell onto the floor... A rock with a note tied to it. I wonder who... Janice hurried to the broken window and peered outside. There was no one in sight on the moon-bathed ranch. But someone threw that rock in. Someone... Huh. Well, I see what's on that paper. Janice picked up the rock, removed the note, and read it. There were a few words poorly scrawled on the paper. Act quick. Ollie. Ollie. Oh, I wonder what he means. Must have seen the sheriff and the men come here, but how? How could he get here? And Confused and shaken, Janice tried to figure who had brought the note and why. Finally, he went out onto the grounds. The fire in the barn still smoldered, but there was no one to be seen. He decided to go to the hideout and learn what the strange note meant. He ran to his horse, mounted, and started for the hill. Get up! Get up, boy! Less than a minute later, four horsemen emerged from the brush by the roadside and followed him. Now, take it easy. Don't let him see us. Come on, Silver. Yeah, come on. Ollie Moonen and Jeff Lowry, in their secret hideout in the hills, were surprised when the door to the cabin opened and Dave Janice entered. Boss, what are you doing here? This note, Ollie. What did you mean by it? What note? This one. 
when you were coming through in the window of my place. Boss, you're crazy. Jip and I haven't left this place since we got here. That's right. And it was a trick. I mean, but wait. What about the money? Where is it? Right over here. See? We opened the bag. There's $28,000 in it. That much, huh? Well, look. We, we better divide it now. And you two better get out of the territory right away. Huh? Why? You were identified tonight. What? A girl from some cafe saw you after you robbed Josh Allen. Why? Besides, there were a masked man and an Indian who saw you leave my what? place early tonight. Masked man and Indian? Did the masked cowboy ride a white horse? Yes, Ali. Hey, hey, that's huh? right. Look at the window. Shoot! Oh, you're too slow. Oh. Get up your hands, Jerry. Deputy Maynard. Yep. Oh, keep them covered while I put the handcuffs on this sneaking skunk. Right what about us? The mask, Combray, shot us. Look at my hand. I, are, I need a doctor. You'll get a doctor, Jip. So will Ollie here. You'll get another jail sentence, too. Out with your hands, Janice. We heard everything. Me, bandage arms, yeah. the crooks, Kimasabi? No, Toto. Deputy Maynard and Mr. Hall have the situation in hand. Yeah. The money that was stolen, too. We'll bandage these skunks before we take them to the Who's, gal. Good. We'll ride on ahead and tell Sheriff Tuttle what happened. He'll meet you on your way to town. Come on, Dotto. Uh, you let that masked man go? Yep, but you're coming with us, Janice. We'll be able to send you away for a long time. That masked hombre did it to me before. If I'd have known he was in these parts, I'd never have come here. Neither would I. He's poisoned. Yeah, but who is he? You don't know yet? You're the boss, just like all other crooks who get caught. He's the Lone Ranger. I don't see. Get on your way. Get on your way with weed. You'll never get discouraged if you keep in mind champions are made, not born. Let's see how Tom Fears, past catching end for the Los Angeles Rams, got on his way. At 12, Tom played football a lot, and many a bump is what he got. But he kept trying, never quit. And here's what helped to keep him fit. He ate his Wheaties every bit. Today, Tom sparks those touchdown drives. It's Wheaties still on which he thrives. Wheaties to Fears, there's a past combination that's been clicking steady now for 19 years. Real energy in Wheaties, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Okay, Tom, snag that pass. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way, he's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties, cause champions are made, not for. Yes, sir. Get on your way, get on your way, get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen.